Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning, uh, Calgary, Alberta, uh, Wednesday morning, November the 10th. I'm happy to be here. This is One Child to Be a Survivor to Another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And uh, the chat room is open if you'd like to sit in there. And I did pop the link in there to um, the article that we were looking at this week. And actually, for the last, this website is just awesome. Uh, Anger Resources. Been looking at it for about three weeks now. And uh, www.angerresources.com, a n g e r e s o u r c e s dot com. Dave Decker and Michael Opsatz have put this together. They're both uh, therapists working in the field of you know anger management and domestic abuse and violence and and whatnot and, and the whole issues surrounding that. I think the the website's just amazing. There's all kinds of great info on there, especially for people who might be suffering from like road rage or you know people who have um, problems just in their daily daily lives, you know, dealing with anger, and, and it, they really kind of show you what anger is, what anger isn't, um, you know, how to appropriately kind of work through uh, some of your issues so that you you don't, you know, spend your whole life just walking around angry and abusive, and um, and then, of course, you get your own needs met because you're not stuffing the anger maybe like I was, and, and you're, they do kind of teach you how to be assertive without being aggressive, and it's just awesome. It's a great website. So I hope you will go check it out. And um, so, yeah, I'm not a counselor or therapist. I have no certificates in that area. I'm just a private citizen paying to do my own blog talk shows and um, survivor. You know, I'm a survivor of child abuse, and I just wanted to be one more voice, right, for people out there. I know there's there's a lot of voices out there if you start looking around. And um, I'm, I just wanted to be one more to add to theirs. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so you have to listen at your own discretion because the topics of abuse are very sensitive. And a lot of people just really, you know, if they haven't heard a whole lot about it, might feel a little uncomfortable with the material. And if you're a survivor, it may trigger you. You know, this kind of stuff can trigger trigger survivors. And so you have to be kind of careful what you're listening to and know what, what's good for you to listen to and listen at your own discretion. And young people under the age of 18, I just ask that you have someone listen to my shows with you because my shows, are, there's a lot of adult content on my shows, and I think that, Children should be protected at all times, right? I mean, you you have to be protected and have to know how to keep yourself safe online. And so it's just important that you do uh, have permission to listen to my shows from an adult, someone who's older who can help you make the decision whether you should be listening or not, right? So important. So we'll get right into this show. And uh, this material here, this is really, uh, it's pretty heavy duty. Like I yesterday we left off talking about um, ver- verbal th- verbal threats, right? And Dave Decker, with this this particular article is called "Define Domestic Abuse," right? And we went over, you know, the emotional, the 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 uh, verbal. Now we're looking at we we were looking at nonverbal threats, and then we were looking at verbal threats, physical threat, you know, physically uh, violent verbal threats, right? Um, the stuff that's more violent, right? It's uh, it's pretty heavy duty. I grew up like this, and I know. You know, I know what it's like to grow up in a home where people are are violent and not getting along and uh, throwing things at each other and hurting each other and hurting the children, right? And so this stuff, you know, I completely, I, I, I totally know what it's all about. And it's uh, it's absolutely a horrible way to grow up. It's a horrible way for people to treat each other in a relationship, you know, let alone treat their children like that. But it's it's what people do, and sadly enough, I've seen so many other people not just in my own family, but friends and, and friends of the family and other people that I've met in my lifetime who live like this, you know. <clears throat> it's absolutely horrible and it is abuse and it's there's no uh there's there's no reason for it. There's no good excuse and I I just you know, because I'm I study this whole issue, you know, I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dream Catchers for Abused Children and you know, abuse is a choice. We have a choice to uh, to not abuse, right? My parents had the choice to not abuse each other. And they had the choice to not abuse us as well. And abuse is always a choice, right? They don't. There's nobody forcing anybody to be abusive. So, you know, if you're an abuser, then you know you have to make the decision to not be abusive, which is what I had to do <clears throat> because I grew up in abuse in a seriously abusive home, and so I just learned how to be abusive. Right? I was taught how to be abusive, and then as I grew older and became an adult in my own relationships, you know, I had to learn how to to not be abusive but the thing is is what I did was I didn't learn how to do it properly and I stuffed my anger instead of dealing with it and so um, then I was just hurting myself right so um, a lot of self-sabotage and and just just in this depression and funk and I didn't want to hurt anybody but then I I, I was 
it was it was killing me, you know. So it's it, we have to learn how to deal with this stuff. Anger is normal; it's a natural response, and it means that there's something wrong, obviously, and that we have to address it. But we don't have to become abusive. We can, um, like Dave Decker here and Michael Obsatz are talking about, you know, we can become assertive without becoming abusive, right? And that's the whole issue. My parents didn't know how to do that, right? So they didn't teach us properly, right? So, uh, so then I didn't know how to do that. So that's the whole issue. You know, it's a learned behavior, most of it. And um, maybe not all of it, but I know that some of it definitely is. And so you have to... Um, have to learn how to handle things properly and how to you know that you can step away you can take some time out you can you can breathe you can talk to people about what you need and you can you know you can't control their behavior that's for sure but you can control your own and i think that's the biggest point right so this information here is just so helpful for me and i I hope it's helping other people too and i hope everybody will go take a look at it we left off at this one section of of, uh, uh, violent threats right well, the one yeah, the day before we were talking about non non violent threats, right? But these would be verbal threats, violent threats. This is, but this is also can cause physical harm or threatening to cause. Uh, communicating either directly or indirectly by, uh, you know, an intention to do violence or physical harm to your partner, your children, other family members and relatives, friends, pets, yourself or property, right? And that's where we kind of left off yesterday. It's absolutely horrific. That's how I grew up, and. Um, you know, we, we're sort of towards the bottom there where yesterday we were talking about uh, making threats uh, to be harsh or abusive with the children, right? Wait till the wait, wait till you go, you know, I'll show those kids what's what when you go to work. Or these would be threats, something that a partner would threaten their other, their their wife or their husband with or their boyfriend or girlfriend with um, their partner, right? They, they might say, wait till your mother's not around to protect you, right? Making threats towards uh, to hurt the children, right? Um, or to be to be abusive with the children, absolutely horrible. They said driving recklessly. Here's another one: when you are angry, to frighten her or him to make a point. And they say her here because in this uh, this particular article is directed um, to men who abuse women. But actually, you know, I know women can be abusive myself, so it could go for either way, right? So, um, but this is just what he's he's talking about in this article: driving recklessly when you're angry to frighten her or make a point. Uh, threatening her with an object, you know, uh, this is uh, this is just the actual violent threat. It, it's not even the actual physical abuse. It's just threatening, right? Uh, threatening her with an object like a belt or a broom. Um, playing with or discharging a weapon around her, right? And making direct or veiled threats to kill her, the children, her pets, or others. For instance, uh, this person could say something like, your parents are going to pay for their interference, or I'm never going to let you leave this marriage. And this stuff is so incredibly serious. And you really, you know, in a domestic violence, domestic abuse situation, a lot of people think, oh, you know, he or she is just threatening me and they would never do it. And then you see the actual headlines that are rolling in out there about the people that actually had been threatening to kill their partner and end up doing it. Uh, you got to take these threats very seriously because if somebody's threatening to kill you, um, you know, you don't want to leave. You don't want to take that lightly, right? I mean, it's uh, it's not it's not funny. I mean, it's not it's different when somebody's laughing and saying, "Oh, I'm gonna kill you," you know, and they're just laughing. And I mean, we all know the difference between somebody who who could possibly kill you because they're unstable um, and they're not thinking clearly and that they are abusing you, right? Or, uh, other than somebody who's joking around. And we all know the difference. I mean, there's no excuse for people to not know the difference between somebody who's violently trying to kill you and destroy your life or somebody who's just playing around, right? So if somebody's really in your life and your life and they are abusing you, you know, and they start talking about killing you, not letting you go or leave the marriage or the relationship, period, um, it does happen and you have to take it extremely serious. And um, my parents were always threatening to kill each other. And, you know, I kind of, after you hear it enough, you know, you grow up hearing that, you start to kind of think, well, I'm not going to, I don't know if I need to actually take that so serious, you know, because they were threatening our lives too. I, well, I did take it serious, however, because my dad had tried to kill himself and he had he had tried to commit suicide with me and my sister in the car one time and stuff like this. And he was trying, he was always saying he was going to kill the, kill the family when we were sleeping, you know, because we were so evil and that we needed to die, you know, and God would be happy, right? This was his big thing, uh, especially when I was like around... Oh, from the time I can remember him doing that when I was about five, six, seven years old, and then onwards up until I was about uh, thirteen or fourteen. So, you know, it was a lot of years of not sleeping very well, 
and sleeping with a knife, you know, and thinking, you know, he could kill us, you know, for sure. And um, he was, they were very abusive towards each other. My mom was always talking about killing him in his sleep. <laughs> so this is the thing, right? And, you know, and I, I always kind of wondered when I was at school if I'd go home and somebody would be dead, right? Because I was thinking one of them guys is going to kill each other one of these days. And uh, it was it's a serious thing, you know. It's not something to take lightly. People do it all the time. They they kill their partners. They kill their boyfriends or girlfriends. If you just start looking around in in what in what's really happening out there, uh, people are killing each other all the time. Absolutely horrific. And no no one should be living like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. People need to uh, straighten up. You know, um, it's just it's just so so harsh. You know. Um, Marking veiled or direct threats to hurt or kill yourself. That's another one. He says here, there's no way I can go on without you, for example. That's what they might say. Or they might say, if you leave, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Or if you if you go, I'm going to kill myself, right? That's something else they do. So they might threaten to kill you or the children, the parents or pets or whatever. Or they might threaten to kill themselves or hurt themselves. So I've seen this so many times, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, even in my sister's relationships, you know, I've heard, I've, I've actually... Um, known and 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 seen that you know her boyfriend was doing that too you know if you leave i'll kill myself and that type of stuff right that's um absolutely ridiculous that people will do that to each other but they do and you know my parents never said that because they they were always trying to kill each other so you know and, and physically you know trying to kill each other so they weren't ever saying if you leave i'll, I'll kill myself it was kind of like I'm going to kill you, and, you know, it's like, so I, they didn't, that, that wasn't going on in our home, but the thing is, is I, I knew people who, who lived like that, you know, where their partners would say, well, I'll kill, I'll kill myself if you leave, and all this stuff, it's absolutely horrific. Psychological abuse, um, this category, he talks about here, number five, he says, this category can include any or all of the categories already mentioned above. Psychological abuse is present when there is a consistent, ongoing, systematic pattern of abusive behavior in an intimate relationship by a person who has more power than their partner. <clears throat> Excuse me. It occurs when the the less powerful partner either feels fearful that there might be violence or when there has been at least one incident of property destruction or physical or sexual abuse toward her or others, right? When there is the potential for violence or when any kind of threats or violence have already occurred in a relationship, uh, verbal and emotional abuse and additional threats then then take an additional impact, right? Because at this point, these behaviors are significantly more likely to create an atmosphere of terror, degradation, and humiliation than would occur in a relationship where threats or violence had not been present. Um, so that's just the whole issue, you know. Like when people, you know, when you've been when you grow up around somebody, or if you're in a relationship with a, somebody, and your partner abuses you, all they have to do is hurt you really bad one time, right? All they have to do is 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 they they make a point by hurting you extremely bad one time. And then they can threaten you and coerce you because you know what's behind their the, their power. You know what I mean? So whether it's the man or the woman, um, you know, hurting the other partner. If they hurt you enough, one or two times really, it, you then are under their control because they have you psychologically um, feeling that you are powerless and that you that they have the power over you and that they can... Uh, they can then use threats and whatever else to make you uh, do what they want you to do, right? And so that's what happens with parents, too, when they abuse their children, right? All they have to do is hurt you really badly a couple of times and or even once, you know, um, and you learn that that uh, any time they threaten you then, the outcome could be just as bad as that particular beating or whatever it was, right? And so, you know, you become psychologically under their thumb, right? Because they have you, right? And so that's that's the whole issue. Then, you know, they, they can threaten you and and, uh, and continue to keep you under their thumb uh, just by making threats. And they then, you know, sometimes they do continue the physical abuse, and, and which quite often most people do. Um, but the whole issue is, is they have you living in fear then of their wrath, right? Of the, of the terror and the degradation and humiliation that they can do to you, um, you know what it's about because you've experienced it from them, and so you live in this, you live in this uh, sort of this fear and this terror, uh, being terrorized under them. You know, <clears throat> so that's the psychological abuse. You know, knowing, you know, that this person has this power over you and that they can seriously hurt you because they've done it before, right? And and you and you, you know, that's the whole that's the whole thing, right? I think it it's absolutely hugely damaging to people um does cause a lot of psychological problems 
and emotional problems as well because with abuse of any type you know whether it's psychological whether it's uh, physical or or sexual abuse child sexual abuse and whatnot there always is going to be emotional abuse and psychological abuse with it right and so you know sometimes there's psychological abuse and emotional abuse with no physical abuse or no no sexual abuse or no sexual assault and stuff but there is always present uh, with the with the physical and the, and the sexual abuse, there will always be present the emotional abuse and the psychological abuse, right? So it's absolutely horrific, you know, what people do. It says here, um, when there is, uh, this is what Dave Decker says, when there is the potential for violence or when any kind of threats to violence have already occurred in the relationship, verbal and emotional abuse and additional threats then take on additional impact. So at this point, these behaviors are significantly more likely to create an atmosphere of terror, degradation, humiliation. Um, he says many relationships involve some of the types of abuse noted above on an occasional or infrequent basis, but psychological abuse becomes part of the relationship dynamic when there is a systematic and persistent effort by a man, and I would say or a woman, uh, through the use of violence, threats, and other abuse of controlling attitudes and behaviors, right, which is to undermine a woman's self-esteem, self-respect, self-confidence, and motivation to create a devastating and debilitating emotional insecurity and fear in her uh, and to render her less capable of taking care of and protecting herself and of functioning interdep- interdependently in the future. Uh, and that's exactly what, you know, my dad did to my mom, <coughs> right? And my mom already had really low self-esteem problems and, and issues because she was abused as a child by her mother um, and then moved, went into this marriage thinking that, you know, that this man would 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 be the answer to all of her problems and then he started and then he he was also very abusive and so um the 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 whole issue is my mom was psychologically systematically abused her whole entire life and so by the time I came along she she was absolutely I would say borderline um crazy you know what I mean she she could not handle or deal with anything right and so you know after being abused for so long right people would think well why didn't she get out exactly that was our question too we used to actually we when we got older especially my brothers would always tell her to to leave you know and they try to get her to move out and try to get her to leave and they would stay they would try to help her too as well and stick up for her in the home even though she was abusing them just the same as me we would all try to help her uh be trying to get her to get away from my dad right and try to help her see that she needed to leave. And, you know, because if she wasn't going to make him leave, then then she needed to leave, right? And we were just, you know, we were just trying to get them to, to separate so that they would have a good life, you know. Because since they weren't going to get help, they were ordered to go, you know, they were brought up on child abuse charges, and they didn't, they were ordered, court-ordered counseling to go um, to counseling, right, for the, for themselves, for their marital problems, and for the children, right? Well, they went twice, and that was it. So that's the issue, you know. They didn't. They didn't want to get help, you know. They just want to live in this this horrific situation, and 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 they created this hell for their children. Uh, this is what people do. They don't take the kids into account. They just think, well, the kids get what they get. This is my home, and you know, this is the way it's going to be here. And I don't care if the kids like it or not, you know. So two of my siblings left the home really quite young. Uh, the oldest siblings took off, right? They were like, okay, bye bye. And um, the middle siblings were stuck uh, without their older protectors and had to take on my dad trying to protect my mom as well as being abused by my dad as well, uh, because he's that's 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 who reported the abuse because they were my dad was abusing my brothers. And so you know the whole issue is that you know they didn't want to get help. They just wanted to continue destroying each other and and the family, right? So you know I I mean it's horrific what people do. And it's not right. And if you're in that situation right now, get yourself some help and get your children some help. It is ultimately your responsibility. See, my, it was ultimately my parents' responsibility to not abuse us or each other, right? But they didn't take on that responsibility. They were like, they were just like, no, this is the way we do it, you know? And it's like, okay, um, you know, it's just like, no, that's not the way life should be. And, you know, it, it's pathetic what they do to their children because they don't consider the children at all and uh, think that they should just be allowed to, you know, whatever they want and and treat the children however they want and bring them up in this hellhole, right? But that's because that's how they grew up. So it's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Another uh, situation is violence towards property or pets. This is number six on this list here. Destroying property or hurting pets to coerce or intimidate a partner into doing what you want her to do. And these actions are also always perceived as violent threats to those who are around when they are occurring or who see the damage that is left behind, right? Uh, violence toward pets or property, hitting or kicking cupboards, walls, or doors, 
uh, slamming your fist on surfaces, desk countertops, uh, arms of the chair, the car dashboard, windshield, steering wheel, things like this. Um, throwing or breaking household items like papers, glasses, dishes, pillows, remote controls. Uh, that's that's how you know, like I was saying, that's how I grew up. So I, you know, it was very violent and very vicious, and things were just getting busted all the time in my home. My parents, it, my mom was always breaking everything. My dad was always breaking everything, and they were always hitting each other with stuff, and they were hitting the kids with stuff, whatever they could get their hands on. So you know, we didn't have a whole lot of stuff left because you know it was always getting busted. You know, my mom would throw coffee cups and dishes, plates, and. Uh, uh, she would hit people with pots and pans. You know, if you happen to be in the kitchen, you had to be really careful. Right? It's, it was a good idea to stay out of the kitchen, you know, because she could get a hold of anything in there and use it for a weapon, right? Plus, she had belts on the wall in the kitchen. So it was just a good idea to not hang out in the kitchen, right? Because that was where she hung out. And, um, you know, my dad, he, you know, he's sort of the same way, slamming his fists on surfaces, slamming his fists on us, um, on my wife. You know, he very much... Uh, loved to do that on his children and his wife. And he was, uh, you know, just a bad man. And throwing and breaking household items, you know, they both did that. They taught us how to do that, and I took that into my adult life. And I was always um, throwing and breaking my own stuff as well, uh, you know, in my relationships and, um, you know, throwing things at my partner and becoming abusive. That's how I was taught to be like that, right? I, you know, I, I, as a child, I talk about this quite a bit on my show that, you know, my, my parents taught me how to behave like that, and, and then they would catch me doing these things and beat me for it, right? So they were like, they taught me how to behave, and then they'd be like, look at your behavior. They, and so it would give them an excuse to beat on me. So that's the whole issue. I know that's what it was. They they didn't ta- they didn't want to stop and take a look and say, oh my God, look at this little monster we created. Um, we look what we're doing. We're you know we're we're warping our daughter. But instead of that, it was like, you know name calling you're a heathen you're a whore you're a slut and kicking my ass and you know because of the they they taught me how to behave badly right and that that's the whole thing you know so i took this into my adult life so if you're doing that same thing you know we can control that we can learn how to not do that uh i I have actually and it's great uh taking hiding or destroying her possessions uh, favorite pictures family heirlooms jewelry presents you have given her yeah my parents didn't do that because they didn't have any possessions like um you know, they lost everything in a bankruptcy when I was young, and they really didn't have anything. So it was kind of like, you know, they didn't have anything that, to take, right? My mom had some jewelry, but my brothers were always taking that and hawking it for drugs and stuff. But my parents didn't really take their own pos- take possessions and stuff like that because they didn't have much. But my my, my sister was in a relationship, uh, in a marriage where her, her husband did that to her. And he was always taking everything of hers. Anything that was that was meant anything to her, you know, and, and give it to other people. He would, I mean, he was just he, he was horrible. I, you know, he was really messed up. Uh, hitting, kicking, throwing, or killing a pet in order to hurt or intimidate her. This is now I've seen people do this in my own home. I used to not trust my dad around my cats, and you know, if I, I had a couple cats at different times, and I I didn't trust him around the cats and stuff like that. But you know, he was more apt to hit and throw us and kick us around than he was the pet. The pets were somewhat safe in the home but the children were not you know it's kind of like you know the cats and stuff were looked after but the kids were not so that's the thing that wasn't an issue for us but i i know that people have done this and i've and i've 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 not witnessed anybody ever do it but i've heard that people do do that you know uh hurt a pet and kill a pet uh you know i've just seen people hurt people right but I've never really seen anybody hurt a pet, which which is a really a good thing, right? Because I love pets and I'm a pet person. I'm an animal lover and I you know, I believe in fighting for animal rights as well. So number seven, the sexual abuse. This is any sexually inappropriate verbal statements, any physical affection or touch forced on another person, or any consenting non consenting sexual act, non-consenting sexual act. This is number seven on this list here. And he, this is Dave Decker. Uh, he says, telling dirty jokes and making sexually demeaning comments about her or other women around her, uh, you know, calling her or other women whores, uh, sluts, and whatnot, right? Calling them names. Staring or gawking at other women's bodies when you are with her or making sexualized comments about other women around her. Um, you know, saying things about other women like, hey, look at those, you know, look at this woman's body, right? Saying different things, right? You know, well, my dad was not like that, but you know, as far as as uh, calling my mom names and calling other other people names, my dad was very much into that. The whole verbal abuse of calling my mom a whore and a slut, and she was, uh, you know, he was always calling her those things. And even after she died, 
uh, he would tell me that your your mom was such a whore. And I'd be like, if you ever say that again, I will never, ever talk to you ever again. And he knew how serious I was, right? So I told him, I will not ever hear you say that to me ever again, you know, uh, because you killed her, you know, every day that you were married, right? You killed that woman, uh, and you will not continue to kill her after she's already dead, right? And so that's the whole thing, you know, it's like he, he literally spent every day of his life killing my mother while they were married, and I was determined I wasn't going to listen to it after she was already gone. So I, I told him, you know, that that would be the last time that he would ever say that to me, and actually that was. So it's great. But the whole thing is, is that's how sick he was. He's just a, a real jerk of a man, and he's still, still living. He's 87 years old. He's schizophrenic, and, you know, he's in care, and I, I avoid him at all costs, right? Uh, staring or gawking at other women, that's what some men do. I don't think that my dad was interested in other women. He was very much interested in making my mom's life hell. And uh, he liked doing that. And it was fun for him, I think. He used to laugh. He thought it was great when he could abuse her or when he could rape her, you know, when he, he could use his force over her, right? Because he did rape her, uh, m you know, numerous times, many, many times. As a matter of fact, he had been raping her for years. You know what I mean? She did not. She was fighting him off. And that's why we were telling her, just leave him. You know what I mean? Uh, for some stupid reason, she would not leave him. Even the courts were like, you know, you got to get help. We're going to remove the children. Or, you know, <laughs> you guys need to do something. And they, they, they stupidly left us in the home, which was really dumb. But they did it anyway, so what can you do? You can't go back and change that. But the whole issue is, is that was the stupidest decision on their behalf they could have ever made. But uh, it happens, and kids are left in homes, and they are either, if they aren't killed, they will be killed spiritually and in every other way, right? So viewing and treating her other women like sex objects, here's something else that, for sexual abuse that, that people will do. Uh, making unwanted or inappropriate sexual comments to her or, or about her in, in front of others. Expecting or, or demanding sex from her, punishing her for not giving you sex, right? That was my dad, for sure. Like, he treated her like an object. So in front of anybody, anywhere, you know, he would say demeaning things to her um, and uh, inappropriate comments about her and to her in front of other people. And, you know, my mom actually started, because he had been doing that to her for so long, started doing that to him. And so they were both doing that towards the end, even at other people's homes, in restaurants. Um, it didn't matter where they were. I mean, that's how sick and twisted they were. Uh, criticizing or demeaning her about her sexual past. Um, insults about her body, right? Making insults about her body. And insisting or expecting that she dress in a certain manner to please you. Uh, unwanted touching of sexual parts of her body. You know, just just totally, uh, you know, intrusive, abusive behavior, uh, you know, sexual uh, abuse, right? Not being interested in or taking into account a partner's lovemaking needs or desires. Uh, coercing or pressuring her into doing any specific sexual activities that she does not want to do or does not wish to do. Um, forcing sex when she's sleeping, when she's not asked, uh, when she's sick or, or could be damaging to her health. Uh, when she says no or sets limits, either verbally or non-verbally. And when she's intoxicated and un unable to say no effectively, right? When she's hesitant or fearful about saying no due to the explosive or abusive anger or the silent treatment that may follow her refusal and for, uh, forcing sex when she's not allowed to use protection against disease or pregnancy and raping her, right? Now, that's what was going on with dad, right? I mean, he was forcing her to have sex, you know, and raping her because if she would say no, then he would just rape her, right? And the reason I know this is because I was a witness to it and so were my brothers. And my brothers used to try to keep them separated. They, you know... They would try to watch. I mean, the people would kind of stand guard around my mom, you know. When she she, well, she didn't sleep very well most of her life, and and uh, you know that's why she, we were like, you should just leave. And if you if, even if you don't take us with you, you can leave the kids in the home. Whatever, we'll deal with that. But you go and get yourself and have a good life. Get yourself to safety and get yourself to have you know a good life, right? Because he, my dad, raped my mom in front of me at the age of six years old, and you know people would say, was it rape? <clears throat> when somebody's fighting somebody off and pleading and begging for them to stop, and crying, and this person is choking them, slapping them, and, and forcing them forcibly, you know, by grabbing their wrists and, 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 and pinning them down and raping them. That's rape. And so my dad raped my mom, and he used to rape her all the time. And, you know, people think, oh, that's just marital, marital stuff. It's like, no, that's rape. And it's marital rape. And it's absolutely horrific what people do. Uh, to their families, right? The next uh, section here we'll talk about tomorrow is the physical abuse, and that's number eight, and you can go check that out yourself. www.angerresources.com forward slash define domestic abuse, right? Make sure you get some help. 
reach out. I don't care. You know, talk to somebody. You know, even if a crisis line, if you don't have somebody to talk to, and you know, get some help if you're in this situation and you're suffering in a domestic violence, domestic abuse situation, or if you're a survivor and you're just having a real hard time dealing with this stuff. Make sure you do get some help, right? Uh, because I'm on the other side of this now, three and a half years later, saying thank God. You know, I'm so glad that I reached out and got some help, and, and you know, that's why I'm doing these shows. I wouldn't be bothered otherwise. Uh, the whole issue is, is that there there is help out there. There's all kinds of survivors that have survived a whole lot worse than I have, and they're out there in front of me saying, come on, man, you can do it, pulling me along. So that's why I wanted to be one more voice in this whole, you know, chain of breaking the chains and breaking the shame and the chains of, of being ab- of, of, of violence and, and the chains of being abused and the chains of shame. Uh, they do not belong to us. You know what I mean? They belong to the abusers. So, you know, we deserve to heal and move forward and, and have a good, decent, healthy life, right? So take good care of yourselves, everybody. We'll talk to you real soon. I'll be back on uh, uh, tonight, actually. Dreamcatchers Talk Radio, as well as my own show, Child Abuse Prevention uh, in Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. And then I'll be back on uh, tomorrow morning as well with one child abuse uh, survivor to another. So take care of yourselves. If you need something, get a hold of me on Blog Talk Radio, Facebook, whatnot. I'll be around. And have a good day. Bye-bye.